All right, here with Dan Hooker, UFC Fight Night London, big fight week. But the first thing I want to ask you about is uh, I got Izzy's side of the trash talking uh, sparring <laughs> sessions that you guys do. And he said you, you got him pretty good w with one line. What, what, is, uh, what can you tell me about the trash talking sparring sessions? I'm trying to think. Well, he, no, I think I instigate it all. I don't think it's that's like the funny thing about us is because like people think he's the bad one and I'm the nice one. <laughs> <laughs> but like the reality of the situation is is, is the complete opposite. Yeah. So it's quite yeah. That's like that's I guess the funny part. He's like the nicest. He's the nicest guy ever. Yeah. Is it fair to say I feel like you're coming into this year with just a completely different mindset? than last year and that's for several different reasons right but is that fair to say do you just feel like this year is going to be much different than last year oh without a doubt without a doubt i feel like yeah i've i've i've, I've grown and and developed in front of everyone's eyes it's not it's not like other fighters who who kind of they get that experience and they they um come to a developed version of themselves then come into the UFC as a finished product I wasn't like that when I came into the UFC so I've been everything in the every risk I've taken in the UFC every development I've made in the UFC every adjustment in my game every addition to my team has been for a reason it's been for a long-term reason and it's I've made that development in front of everyone's eyes every fighter has that makes that same development but they might have 20, 30 you, uh, amateur fights, mm -hmm. then 20 kickboxing fights, and then have a pro MMA fight, you know, like, and then they develop outside of the UFC, come into the UFC as a finished product. My, my first fight is on my UFC record. The first fight I ever had in my life is, is a pro MMA fight. It's on my UFC record. So from that moment, um, you know, I was three and three as a professional. Before, and then I went to my coach and I was like, hey, Coach, how do I start working on that record you see in the UFC? And he just mm -hmm. looks at me, shakes his head and said, Dan, you're, you're already free and free, mate. You s <laughs> I said, that's going to show up on the UFC? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's going to show up on the UFC. And I was just like, well, that's not my path. You know what I mean? Like then from that moment, I was like, well, that's not my path to go in there in the UFC as a finished product. Mm -hmm. um, I, d I don't need that. I can develop. I have the courage. Um, to let everyone see that process, to, to, to open myself up to everyone, to let them view that process. And it'll be, it'll be cool for the people that have been following me the whole time and seen that process and seen that development. It'll be cool. It'll be, yeah, it'll be like mind blowing for them to just be like, oh man, like we were right. We were right. He mm -hmm. was working on something the whole time. And that's just the way that I feel. I've been working on something and developing something this entire time. And it's been the process, but I feel like, I feel like, yeah, you're right. I'm coming to the end of that process. Yeah, well, and just last year specifically, because of everything that was going on and uh, the nature of, you know, how the Islam fight came up, like I saw you describe in another interview that you were just doing cowboy shit last year, which I thought was a great way to describe it. And you said it was fun. But it's like, I feel like there's a business approach to it this year. Uh, the, just with the way you're talking about the drop to 45 and, you know, entering this new, the, re, going back to this division. Is that, is that kind of, do you feel that at all? Like just, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've had that realization in the last day. Like since yesterday, I was like, no, I have been thinking, of, this has been my plan all along. I, I, I remember thinking when I initially left Featherway, I was like, I'll be back. I'll be back. You know what I mean? And, and I made the move up to lightweight. And it, it was easy to attribute, it's easy to attribute that success to like a change in weight class. Oh, he was cutting too much weight. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's easy to attribute all of that, but so much has changed. So much, like absolutely everything has changed. The team I surround myself with, my mentality, my level of professionalism has all, has all grown and changed um, since that first, since I first stepped foot inside the, the UFC. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it almost odd for you to think about that last year um, the results weren't, weren't always what you wanted? But I got to believe that, that like, career-wise, it seemed like you never 
done better. Like, like you, you got a new contract before the Islam fight, right? And just like the, the way that the fans appreciated what you were doing. Like, how do you feel about last year in that regard? That maybe some of the results didn't go your way, but it seems like your career is, is, is in a better place than it was last year. Again, like I, I knew what it was when I was taking those risks. I knew what it was when, um, yeah, when I was taking those risks and I knew what it was. I knew, I knew that my long-term plan, I knew that there was a reason behind it. I knew there was a direction towards it. So why not? Why not? If I knew long-term that I was going to make the move back down to featherweight and put everything together and then start implementing all of those lessons that I had learned, mm -hmm. why not make the most money you've ever made in your life in <laughs> in a year like mm -hmm. it, it was a tough time for everyone the pandemic times like it's a tough time for everyone most people took some um yeah most people's like being at home and seeing people's businesses fail and stuff like that like i didn't take it for granted that i was able to not only get out there and put food on the table and make a living for my family but go out there and then that last year make more money than i've made in the rest of my life combined mm -hmm. so it's yeah i'm 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 grateful for that opportunity from the UFC. Mm -hmm. um, I saw you, another thing that you said that I found interesting was the way you described this camp, and that is that you have to think about the fight all the time when you're making 145. When you're at 155, you cannot think about the fight sometimes because you can have those little moments where, you, like, because you don't have to be as disciplined. Mm -hmm. Why do you like that? Why do you like having a fight on your mind 24 hours a day? It brings out the best in me. Like that's just, that's just a personal thing that like you can't, every, every human is different, their motivations, the, the way they think is different. You can't copy or emulate, you know, I've got world championship teammates in Israel Adesanya, Wokonofsky. I can't just copy the way that they think. Like uh, I found myself doing that. Like obviously you can learn things from them and pick some things up, but I can't, I, trust me, I can't do what Israel does. I can't go out there and have fun on the weekends and then come into the gym and smash it. And, you know, he's, he's just a whole different, like, I can't copy that. That doesn't, that model and that framework doesn't work for me. Mm. My framework that works for me is, is just focus. It's mm. just dedication. It's just knuckle down. It's just eat, sleep, train. You know, so this is this is the this is the formula that works that works for me. Mm -hmm. Is it I, listening to you talk about 145? It does make it just sound like I'm the best version of myself at 145. But did you ever just uh, did you ever feel undersized at 155? Uh, I seen the weights. <laughs> uh, you know me, a, a cheeky grin and a smile. You get away with more than uh, more than most people. So I, I seen. I seen that little clipboard before they started blacking them out, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not bad. Like over fifteen minutes, it don't make it don't make too much difference. Um, but carrying carrying those boys around um, for twenty five minutes, and and oh, we're talking about like the top echelon in the world. We're talking about like a handful of guys, the best handful of guys in the world. Mm -hmm. I know from experience that for for me competing over 25 minutes against the top echelon in the world is featherweight. Mm -hmm. That's that's the weight class that I know that will bring out the best of me. It's no, that's where I should be competing. Mm -hmm. And you have fought, you know, the best at 155. You know where those tiers are. You know, you know who's elite, what, what, what elite feels like, what it looks like. Has Ar Arnold Allen shown that to you yet? Or is he, on, is he has still have to prove that? In your mind nah he's elite yeah. <laughs> without a doubt without a doubt he's skill for skill he's he's up there skill for skill um he's a very tidy fighter he's a very if you actually go back and like watch those fights he's he's well-rounded he's skillful it's um he definitely warrants that that level of respect mm -hmm. and i've heard you say that uh this fight could be really technical or it could be, you know, a brawl back and forth that you both kind of carry that. As it's getting closer, do you start? Do you feel one way or another that like you think it's going to lean more towards one way? It's kind of on him. Yeah. It's kind of on him. Why is that? If someone's being technical and you go out there and you're just like, man, I feel like getting in a brawl, you're going to lose. That's just, that's just the way it is. You can't like, uh, for two fighters to fight like that, 
for two fighters to get in that kind of wild that that's a that's a mutual agreement one one man can't force um that style of fight like those mm -hmm. fan favorite entertaining fights the old saying it takes two to tango is is nothing but the truth mm -hmm. if you want to get in that kind of fight i will oblige you that is you don't need to you don't need to ask me twice yeah. um but yeah, so it's up to him. I already, I already got my hand in, but I'm not an idiot. I'm not, um, I'm not gonna go out there, yeah, I'm gonna get in this brawl, and then he fights super technical and just uh, makes me look like a clown. Yeah. Like, that, would be, that would be very naive on my half. So if, we'll, we'll see how the fight develops. Last thing for you, I guess, um, with the sacrifices that you're making, you know, cutting this weight, having the fight on your mind 24 hours a day, I, you know, I, I heard you say that you haven't seen your family yet in, in 2022. Um, does it make the result matter more? Like, do you say to yourself, like, Dan, if you're going to sacrifice all these things in your life, like the, the result matters so much or like, can it not matter more than it already did previously? Or do, do you feel like the weight of the results are, are kind of heavy right now? Ah, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. I'm demanding from this. I'm, I'm demanding a lot. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm expecting, I'm expecting a, a, a good result, and that's, yeah, like those the losses, it's not good enough, it's not good enough, but that's between me and me, that's not because anyone came up to me and said anything about that, and someone said, oh, like someone made me feel some type of way, like no one, no one is as hard on me as me, um, but it's on me to go away and, and make those adjustments, make those changes, and, and come back, um, so I put a lot of pressure on myself, and for this fight, especially, um, I'm cranking that up, and I'm, I'm putting a lot of pressure, and I'm, ex I'm expecting a, I'm expecting a win. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it, man. I always enjoy talking to you, and of course, enjoy the fight on Saturday. So good luck. Pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.